unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Tell your name, I'm going to give God something that is costly. Tell your neighbor, I am going to give God something that is costly. I feel the praise of God already. It's so heavy on me right now. I feel the praise of God. I feel. Is somebody feeling it? Is somebody feeling the praise of God? Is somebody feeling it? I feel the atmosphere is changing. Give God something costly.
the Lord is healing you now. I feel the presence of God. I feel a presence that makes whole. I feel a power that uplifts and upholds. I feel a power that consecrates and separates. Oh, Talk to him and tell him, God, I love you.
If you're sick, you've been healed. I'm not encouraging you. I'm just telling you what just took place. If you came sick of any pain and God has just healed you, put up your hand. So people know what I'm saying is serious. Put up. Put up. Hi. Okay, stand up so they see. Stand up. I tell God has healed you. Stand up so they can see what God does in worship. Yeah, yeah. God is a healer. You may be sick. There's just something about the name. Tell him, Jesus, Jesus, tell him, Jesus, there's just something about the name. Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6. Verses 1. Let's begin from verse 1. Daniel chapter 6. Verses 1. Are we there? Are we there? Now, let's start reading. The Bible says... It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom and 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom, and over those three presidents. I hope you understand that English. He set 120 princes, and over those princes, he set three presidents. All together. Of whom Daniel was first, the princes might give that the princes might give account unto them who the presidents and the king should have no damage. It's called administration. We're soon teaching it on a certain forum. Pastor Zach has been demanding it for some time. Then this Daniel was preferred above all the presidents and what? Princes, because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king sought to set him over the whole realm. Excellence is a spirit. Tell your neighbor, excellence is a spirit. It's not a state. It's not a state. It's not just appearance. Tell your neighbor, it's not a state. It's not just an appearance. Excellence is a spirit. Then the Bible says the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could find none occasion, no fault. Why? They were jealous. He was a success. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against Daniel, now underline that portion, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. 
Somebody underline that. They said, we shall not, we shall not find any occasion against Daniel except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Somebody said the law of his God. Say it again. Say the law of his God. Of his God. Now, it's not news. It's as old as human life has existed. That a man is blessed when he walks with God. Are we together? A man is blessed when he walks with God. Are we together? Not when he visits the sanctuary. Are you hearing me? Not when he serves in the church only. Not when he gives to the poor, but when a man walks with God. Hallelujah. Sometimes the church does not honor, respect, and understand the intensity of what it implies for a man to walk with God. Are we together? When a man is walking with God, that man is God's business. Are you hearing me? When a man walks with God, that man is set apart by God. Are you hearing me? He has a personal relationship with God. Are we together? There's something I'll share a bit ahead and you'll understand what I mean by that. Some people loosely make the statement, I have walked with God for 20 years. I have walked with God for 30 years. I have walked with God for 15 years. Why? Because they say they are born again. But there are deeper consequences when a man says that they are walking with God. Are we together? As we transition into knowledge, as the prophecy was given by God that in the last days knowledge shall be increased, some of us are going to start to respect more the statement, a man of God or a woman of God. Do you understand? A man of God or a woman of God is not just somebody who is special, who walks with guns around him. Are you hearing me? Or who just preaches on a pulpit every Sunday. That's just a preacher, a teacher, an evangelist, a prophet, and, and a pastor. But a man of God is something even off that pulpit. A woman of God is something even after that service. Are you hearing me? Are we together? So when the Bible speaks of being a man of God, there's a certain relationship in a few minutes I'm going to define for you. But it's not really the center of the sermon I want to preach today, today because today I'm going to delve into something a bit different. But it will be connecting. Are we together? So Daniel, the Bible tells us, he was serving as a president or a governor, I don't know. And a president, sorry. So he's dealing with princes, guys who are below him, about 120. And then the Bible says he becomes a success. There was no error with him. For in him, the Bible says, it was an excellent spirit. And then guys say, okay, now. They became jealous of Daniel, and they wanted to harm him. If you read the scriptures later, they told the, 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 the king, they told him, why don't you put a decree that any man who bows to any other god except your god shall be, shall be killed, right? Because they wanted to set themselves against Daniel and get him destroyed. But that's not the point that I wanted to delve in. My mind here goes to the fact that it's as old as any man knows that when a man walks with God is a success. When certain things fall out of line, sometimes it has to do with a man's walk with God and relationship. Are we together? You remember the days of Jonah? The Bible says that the ship started shaking. And this guy says, who on this ship defiled their God? There's something. Somebody must have played and pressed the wrong button. This thing is just not happening by mistake. Until the man came out and said, the Lord has instructed me to go somewhere else. And then I what? Thank you. Before that, wherefore they cried until the Lord said, 
There's a version, the, the, the verses before that, if you want to read it. Begin with 12, I think. Begin from verse probably 7. 7. Mm -mm, verse 4. 5, I think. 5. Begin with 5. Okay, 4, 4. Thank you. 4 is good. The Lord, give me the message Bible. The message version. The Bible says, God sent a huge storm at the sea and the waves towering. The ship was about to break in two pieces. The Bible says, the sailors were terrified and they called out in desperation to their gods. They threw everything they were carrying overboard to lighten the ship. Meanwhile, Jonah had gone down into the hold of the ship to take a nap and was sound asleep. And the captain came to him and said, what is this? Sleeping. Get up. Pray to your God. Maybe your God will see we're in trouble and rescue us. The sailors say to one another, let's go to the bottom of this. Let's draw straws to identify the culprit on this ship. Who is responsible for this disaster? So the Bible says they drew straws and Jonah got the what? A short straw. And then they grilled him. Confess. Why this disaster? What is your work? Where do you come from? What country? What family? He told them, I'm a Hebrew. I worship God, the God of heaven who made the sea and the land. At, the men, at, at that, the men were frightened, really frightened, and said, what on earth have you done? <laughs> what have you done, man? What have you done? Tell you about ships just don't sink. And I'm going to say a very hard one. People just don't die in car accidents. Say, I refuse to die like that. Say, I refuse to die. <laughs> Christians have a way of saying, ah, no, it's the will of God. Sometimes we must understand the will of God. Are we together? I know it was the will of God. It took him that way. Let me tell you. Does that mean that everyone who dies in accidents is wrong or has sinned or has done something wrong before God? No. I'm not saying so. I'm only saying that people just don't die like that. For we do not wage with flesh and blood. Are you hearing me? If you should take me, let him find me in my sleep and take me home comfortably with all my teeth in, right? <laughs> That's my story. Praise the Lord. Are we together? I refuse to die an, an, an honorable death. Are we together? Unless it's, 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 it has to do with the gospel somewhere in Manila, that one you don't mind. You understand? That one you don't what? You don't mind. But I was just driving out. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Tell your neighbor. Uh -uh. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. So, they knew that if something has happened, you must have done something. Right? In other words, things just don't happen. Now, when we transition into knowledge, you realize that when Hosea 4, 6 says that my people die because they lack knowledge, the primary reason why people just die is a lack of knowledge. It is hard, but it is true. Saints, it's very hard, but it is true. Sometimes we become more, more emotional, sensationally, right, than revelational. You can put a feeling now, do you know, and I'm not just saying. My point is, you ought to know to live. He says that the just shall live by faith. And how does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. As you continue to hear the word of God, there are things God saves you from. As you continue to know, there are things God saves you from. There are things that kill certain people and will not kill you because of what you know. <laughs> and that's the truth. Because when he sends his word, he heals. Are you hearing me? When he sends his word, he delivers. That is why I believe that as the church transitions, we are going to live longer, healthier, richer, 
more anointed. Why? Because he is increasing knowledge. Of course, a few will fall on the way. That is okay. By the way, our end is not death. Thessalonians says this. We're not of them that are without hope. Right? We don't grieve like them which are like without hope. We don't fear to die. We just fear not to accomplish what God called us to do. Are we together? So he says, brethren, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them that are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. Give me the Amplified. The Amplified says, now also we want you to have you, we would not have you ignorant, brethren, about those who fall asleep in death, that you may not grieve for them as the rest do, who have no hope beyond the grave. We have a hope that goes beyond this mortal body. Are you hearing me? So, we're not afraid to die. I don't walk and say, oh God, let me not die. I fear to die. No, 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 no. We are, we are delivered, right? Death has no sting on you. Somebody said, death has no sting on me. <laughs> you, amen. So, now, Daniel walked with God, and I wanted to make something a bit personal here. They want to put something before him to destroy him as a stumbling block. And the scriptures say, they say, we shall not lay anything against this guy except we find it against, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Are we together? Now, when the Spirit of the Lord was ministering to me about that scripture, I realized that he should, or he could have said, except we find it against him concerning the law of God. Are we together? They would have said, then say this man, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of God. Right? But the scriptures have not said the law of God. The scriptures have said the law of his God. There is a possession of God. Right? In the law he sets before Daniel. I don't know if I'm making sense. There's, there's a place of God possessing him in the law he sets. Now, in there, he's not talking about the law of Moses. And I'm going to qualify that. In Hebrews, he says, in that day, I shall establish another covenant with them. Are we together? He says, I will establish another covenant with them. 10.16. He says, this is the covenant, Hebrews 10, 16. He says, this is, brother, Hebrews 10, 16. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. He says, I will put my laws, you see, mine, right, laws into their hearts. And in their minds, I will write them. And the Bible says, next verse, and their sins and iniquities I will remember no more. The ownership comes in again. Next verse. Nowhere remission of, of this is, now where remission of this is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, eh, Jesus. Let's go back. I need to show you something. Let's go back. Before, before. I think some of you might lose me. No, before, before. Uh-huh. Thank you. Let me begin from there because I'm going to come. And I've realized that I'd left some people. This is the covenant. He says, I will make with them after those days. He says, I will put my laws. I will get my laws and I will put them into their hearts. And their minds will I write them. He will write them. Right? Now, when God, I realized I'd left, I'd left somebody. When God puts these laws in their hearts and writes them therein, the consequence of that is verse 17. Right? Next verse. And their sins and iniquities, I will remember no more. Why? Because they stopped sinning. I don't know whether you're getting it. Okay, let's go back. Somebody doesn't get me. Let's go back to 16. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts. And in their minds, I will write them. Right? What is the end there? The, what is that? That cup? That 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 cup? That cup? Semicolon. What does the semicolon mean? 
the next one completes what has been said before, right? In other words, it doesn't end with me just writing in their hearts. The next verse says, when I write, their sins I will remember no more. <laughs> I don't know whether you got it. The moment I write my laws in their hearts, their sins I'll remember no more. Why? Because once I write them in their hearts, something will happen, right? The next verse says, now let's go to this next verse. Nowhere, now, sorry, now, where remission of this is, there is no more offering for sin. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So, in that, the Bible says now, next verse, having, therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. You see that? We, by a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us through the veil. That is to say, through his what? His flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God. You see, l l let us draw nigh to him with a true heart in full assurance of what? Faith. Having our hearts what? Sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. I don't know if I'm making sense. What comes first is when God puts his laws in your heart, right? The first thing he does is, is to forget your sins, okay? Now, someone says, but that doesn't make sense. Wait, that doesn't make sense. Because you see, this new creature is not given laws. The laws are put in there. So this new creature is the law. I don't know that. The law is a part of the new creature, right? But God's laws, <laughs> I don't know if I'm making sense, but God's what? God's laws. That is why in Isaiah, even later in Hebrews, he says that they, I shall be their God and they shall be my people, right? There is a place where the law of God, just when I say the statement, the law of God, shifts and transitions in relationship and becomes the law of your God, right? Where God owns that particular law. I don't know if I'm making sense. Well, God owns what he has put in you. And I'll tell you what. God cannot own what he has put in you if it is against you. Because he's for you. The Bible says, blotting out the handwriting and the ordinances that were against us and contrary to us. Nailing them to the cross. When Jesus came, he blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that was against and contrary. The law of Moses was against and contrary. The law of God is for you. He owns it, says, that's mine. Mine is for you. What's for Moses is against you. I don't know if I'm making sense. C can I say it again? So when the Bible says he blotted out the handwriting, oh, somebody said, what do you mean? Okay, give them the Amplified. Amplified. Having, one, two, three, let's go. Having cancelled and did what? Blotted out and wiped away the handwriting of the not born with its legal decrees and demands which was in force and stood against hostile to us. This not with its regulations, decrees, demands, he set aside and cleared completely out of our way by nailing it to the cross. Am I making sense? So when the Bible says that he blotted out, go back to the KJV, he blotted out the handwriting of the ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way and nailed it against the cross. Anything contrary to you, Jesus died for, right? When, 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 when you begin the life of salvation, nothing in you is against you. I don't know if that making sense. Nothing in you is against you. It can only work for you. That is why when he puts these laws in the scriptures, the Bible says, I will cause them. The reason why he remembers not these sins is because in you he puts the ability to cause you. I don't know if I'm making sense. He says, I'll put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. I will cause you. There is a thing that just causes you. You don't say, ah, let me not steal. No. There is something that causes you not to steal. Now, when you're dealing with a new creature, it's error to tell them not to do what they are configured not to do. 
Okay, it's wasting their time. You'd rather explain to them this configuration and they understand. Now, we are dealing with the law of our God. Are we together? I don't know if I'm making sense. You see, let me, let me explain something. I'm going to say something and qualify it. Eh? Hmm? In Romans 8, there is now therefore no condemnation. Many of you know that scripture. Right? There therefore is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Some people read that scripture as, for now there is no condemnation to them which walk after the spirit, which do not do the things of the flesh, but do the things of the spirit. But the word they are walking is not doing. Peripateo is deporting oneself, right? So when the Bible says that, therefore, there is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who do not deport themselves after the flesh, it means they do not count themselves as fleshly men. I don't know who you understand. It's not so much the action because nature precedes action. Action does not precede nature. You're not a thief because you stole. You're a thief because you carry an Adamic nature. Right? So you carry a corruptible seed. It can steal. So stealing came after the nature to steal, right? When you change the nature, you're no longer a thief. I can see stealing in you, but I cannot call you a thief anymore. I, I don't know if I'm making sense. I, I don't know if I'm making sense. So, peripateo, that place of setting yourself, deporting yourself into the flesh. It means there are people who are too conscious of being in the flesh. Every day they imagine themselves no more human beings. They submit themselves to the laws of humanity. They submit themselves to the things and the elements that humans are controlled under and humans control. So here he's saying that he's not talking about them who walk after the flesh or who set and deport themselves into the flesh and assume every time and are conscious Right? Now, do you remember what uh, the, 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 the kind of cleansing of the conscience, which I just read about a while ago? Right? Because the, the, we sprinkle ourselves from an evil conscience, and then our bodies are washed. Are you seeing the order? When a man can fix the conscience, you'll fix everything about you. Right? Now, let's go back to something I need to show you. Now, give me the Amplified of the same, Romans. The Amplified of the same, Romans 8, 1. Therefore, there is now no condemnation, no judging guilt or wrong for those who are in Christ, who live and walk not after the dictates. You see? Live and walk. You see? Live and walk. Live and walk. Live. Live. They don't live after the dictates of the flesh, but after the dictates of the spirit. And the next verse says, for the law, listen, of the spirit of life. Why? When you became born again, you received the law of the spirit of life. That's the law of God. That's the law of God. It is the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus, the law of our new being. When you become born again, that thing is not in a man who is not born again. It's in a man who is born again. It's like the other day I was reading something in James. I'm going to show you something. Take a symbol, I'll, I'll put a stick there. In James... Many people read James 5.17, right? You remember when they're reading James 5.17? He says, Elias or Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And he trained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. When people read that, do you know what they think? When somebody reads and says, Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. Right? When you read the word there, the Hebrew word for, actually the Hebrew statement there says, Elias was a man subject to like passions as we. Right? He didn't say 
are. The Hebrew they input, the Greek they input are. And I'll explain that. Elijah was, is not like you. In fact, let me explain it. Give me the Amplified. The Amplified says, Elijah was a human being with a nature such as we have, not as we are. I don't know whether you understand. He was a human being with a nature such as we have, not as we are. We have a human nature, but we are not human beings. Look at this man. What is he saying? Every day you say it, listen, that you, you claim it with scriptures every time. You say, in him we live. So your living is in God, right? In him we move. And in him we have our being. Our being is in Christ. We are Christ beings. We're not human beings. <laughs> I don't know if I'm making sense. So, when people say, Elijah was a man of like passions, they say, ah, yeah, even Elijah was a human being like me, but he stopped the sun. No, 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 no. He was a human being like the nature of human being you carry, but you are after another identity. You are defined differently because in you is the law of the life-giving spirit. And I'll explain the difference. When a man who is not born again, like Elijah, Elijah wasn't born again. He was a soul with a relationship in God. Because the Bible says in Corinthians that how be that the first man was a living soul and the second man was a, live, a life-giving spirit. And he says, how be that the first was natural and the second was spiritual. That means that Elijah was a natural man with a relationship with God. When a natural man prays for rain, this is how his prayer does, works. He says, Father, send rain, right? Natural man relating with spirit God. Spirit God hears and then sends rain. It has nothing to do with him. It has everything to do with his prayer. That's why in James, he's talking about the prayer of a righteous man, right? But let's transcend a bit higher than that. When you become born again, the treasure leaves heaven and settles inside you. You transition from God sent fire, God sent rain, to rain come. I don't know where, where I'm going. God, God, God no longer wants, uh, uh, no. God wants it to come out of you. He says we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above that which we dare to ask or think according to the working power that comes from heaven. No, that worketh in us. The new creature is the embodiment of that power. He trusts you. You have the ability to hold it. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. You decree it, it happens. Why? Because the very mouth that speaks it comes with the power to execute it. Why? When you speak, out of you comes power that worketh to do exceedingly, abundantly, above that which you dare to ask or think. Because it's inside you now. T.L. Osborne, I love the way he said it. Many years ago, T.L. Osborne said, we no longer call fire from above. We spread and release it out of us. That's what T.L. Osborne said. He says, we no longer say fire come, no. We call it out of us. He says, for out of you shall flow rivers of living water. Why? Because in you is the law of the life giving spirit in Christ. Are you hearing? So you are conscious of the God being that you are. Ye are gods. Ye are gods. He says, is it not written in your law? 
of which it is impossible for the scriptures to be broken. God won't break scripture and change it. He says, for I say, ye are gods. Is it not written in your law, lawyers? I say, ye are gods. He called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scripture can not be broken. Some people say, king of kings, which kings? Me and you. You think he's talking about <laughs> the, the kings of this world? No way. No way. No way. He's talking about you and I. Because when we receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, he says, we reign. No man reigns without territory. No man reigns without kingdom. Are you hearing me? He's the king of kings and lord of lords. Now, some people, when I say lords, they think about their lord. Who tells them, dig there. Uh, stop digging there, dig there. No, I'm talking about lords. Praise the Lord, you and I. When you became born again, you adopted the spirit of lordship. Why? Because it says the first man is of the earth, as he. And it says, but the second man is the Lord from above. And this is love made perfect that you might have confidence on that day. For as he is, so are we in this world. When you enter this world, you came with lordship. You carry authority over anything in this earth. This world is under our control. We are not subject to its control. We are not survivors. No, we are pest setters. Christians can't say, oh, how am I going to survive in this world? How, how am I going to survive in this world? Oh, Lord, how am I going to survive in this world? No, you're not a survivor on us. Let's go back to Romans. I need to show us something. So he says, for there is now no condemnation, no adjoining guilt of those who are in Christ Jesus who live and walk not after the dictates of the flesh but after the dictates of the spirit. They don't set themselves as human beings. They're not conscious as carnal fleshly men, right? Therefore, next verse, for the law of the spirit of life which is in Christ Jesus, the law of the new being has freed me from the law of sin and death, right? For God has done, listen, what the law could not do, its power being weakened by the flesh, the entire nature of human, of the, of the man, sorry, without the Holy Spirit, right? That's the entire nature of a man without the Holy Spirit. Sending his own son in guise of sinful flesh and as an offering for sin, God condemned sin in the flesh. What did he do? He subdued, overcame, deprived it of its power over all who accept Christ. The moment you become born again, you, are, you have subdued, you have overcome. Sin is deprived of its power. You do it because you don't like, you like it. You can't do it anymore because it has power over you. That's why I told people, you can't tell me you're born again and you're addicted. You can't be addicted of what God deprived of power. It's like smoking pepper and you get high. In some high, why? I smoked pepper, a piece of pepper. No, it's impossible. You can't smoke a piece of pepper and get high. He deprived sin of its power over any man who accepts the sacrifice. So you, you do it because you like it. You cannot be under bondage. Well, me, I'm addicted. I can't stop drinking. You can stop. Me, I, I can't stop drugs. You can stop. I can't stop messing myself. You can stop. You can stop. Me, I don't know. I have this anger. It goes to my grandfather. Eh, eh. New creature. New creature. Tell your neighbor, I can stop. Because sin is deprived of its power. Now, next verse. So, that the righteous and just requirement of the law might be, listen, when Jesus died, the, the righteous and just requirement of the law might be fulfilled or met. He didn't say by us. He said that it might be met, met in us. I don't know that you know the difference. He's not saying that the righteous requirement of, 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 of the law will be met by you. No, it is met in you. Are you seeing the difference here? When his laws get inside you, when you receive the spirit, the spirit operates in you to fulfill the requirements of the law. So it's not even your business. It's the business of the Holy Ghost. Right? And 
For us who live and move, not in the ways of the flesh, but in the ways of the spirit, our lives are governed not by the standards according to the dictates of the flesh, but controlled by the Holy Ghost. Next verse says, for those who are according to the flesh, who are according to the flesh, are controlled by its unholy desires and set their minds and pursue those things which gratify the flesh. Give me the KJV. The KJV says, for they, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. That's what I was saying. When you're after, it means when you're conscious that you're a fleshly man, you realize that you mind the things of the flesh. Have you seen people who fight each other? Then they beat, pa, pa, pa. Then they reconcile later. Then the guy says, Anti tuliba, anti tuniga. <laughs> okay, let me translate it for those who don't know English. He said, ah, we are human beings. We're human beings. See, there are things you claim and they're not supposed to be yours, but to error is human. Hey, 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 hey. Yes, yes, but me, I'm not human. Okay, does that mean that there, there is no error in the flesh? It can be there, but I'm not conscious of this human guy. I'm conscious of the spirit man. I don't know that I'm making sense. So I don't use those lines. Are we together? Are we together? So when you mind the things, it means you set your mind. Some people are too conscious of how human they are. You get it? The other day I found a Christian telling his friend, hey, 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 don't sit on a border. What's in your head? What's in your head? What's in your head? What is in your head? What is in your head? You have movies that are playing out, scenes that, that human beings, I, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Let me tell you, be free. Because whether you're on a border, or whether you're in a plane, you can die. Abaganda baganti omukisanga gwa kute mubine eri mvuli kumenye eri nyo. When when you're not on the side of the blessing, even a banana can break your tooth. <laughs> yeah, remember those times before I bought a car. I used to sit on borders for like five years. Now my father is saying, I am one of the border. After he says it, I say, Rabba Kosha, land the coast. I cannot, you, it's, it should, it, I, no. He says, none of his bones was broken. This is a scripture. And he is so am I. I will never break on a border. I refuse that. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sit in a car, sit on a border, fly in a plane, don't worry. You're different. Tell your neighbor I'm different. I'm different. Do you know why some of you fall prey to the devil and his works? It's because you're too cautious. You know, there are people who say, even the way we teach them sometimes, we tell them, you know you are human beings. Anything can happen. People are too cautious to be human beings. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? Instead of telling them, no. You are godly beings. Nothing will befall you. Ah, you are tempting the devil. No, 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 no. He's already tempted. <laughs> Do you understand? He's already what? Tempted. Are we together? If you're tempting God. God cannot be tempted. Neither tempteth he any man with evil. No man can tempt God. And God cannot tempt Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He cannot be tempted with evil. You can't say Mbokema Katonda. That thing doesn't exist. You can't tempt God. Are we together? So some Christians, you see, it's like many of you read the scriptures. Who has known the mind of Christ or God that he should instruct him for? We now have the mind of Christ. Can you read that in the Amplified? The Amplified says, for who has known and understood the mind, the counsels and purposes of the Lord, so as to guide and instruct and give him knowledge. He says, but we have the mind of Christ. Listen, and do hold, what do you hold? The thoughts and feelings and purposes of his heart. Can Jesus be there and worry on a border? You don't get it. Jesus sits on a border border, those small motorcycles. And then Jesus is like, Ropo Koshala, Sharaba. You understand? Tell your neighbor, I think like Christ. 
I'm not conscious of accidents. I'm not conscious of death. I'm not conscious of weakness. I'm not conscious of failure. In the name of Jesus. Because you hold the thoughts the way he feels and the way he purposes. Don't set yourself against it. Let's continue. Let's continue, Romans. Give me the message. It says, obsession with self in these matters is what? Dead end. Attention to God leads us out into the open, into a spacious free life. I don't know. Some of you, instead of being conscious and giving attention to God and the Spirit, you're conscious to self and your ability. Next verse. He says, focusing on the self is the opposite of focusing on God. Anyone completely absorbed in self ignores God, however good you are, and ends up thinking more about self than God. That person ignores who God is and what he is doing, present continuous. Because you're so conscious of yourself, you start ignoring what God is and what he's doing. Right? You're so conscious of yourself. Oh, mama, let me not fall down. You? <laughs> Sigwa. Yeah, did you hear that? Sigwa. When you start becoming God conscious, you can't say Sigwa because you're not alone. And you can't both fall. So you say, you cannot say, oh, I don't want to fall down. No. And you can't say, we cannot fall down because you and God can't fall. Right? You say, we don't fall. That's what you say. We don't fall. You say aloud, we don't fall. We don't fall. Did you hear that? Then there's another say, ah, Sigwa. You're too conscious of what? Self. Apostle, I'm in trouble. You and who? Alone. You've already separated yourself from God. Right? So when the two of you get together, again you can't say, we are in trouble. You'll find your mouth saying, we can't be in trouble. Apostle, we can't be in trouble. A certain guy sent me an email a few days ago. He said, Apostle, last semester my GPA was three point something. This semester, it is two point something. Listen, listen, I love the way the guy said it. He says, but I thank God. Because I'm wiser. <laughs> now a carnal man will say, let us be realistic. <laughs> Tell your neighbor there is no reality except Christ. Remember saying, hey, Apostle is spoiling people. No, I'm correcting who you spoiled. Teresa <laughs> Are we together? The guy said, but I'm wise, Apostle. I thank God because I'm wiser than last semester. I'm wiser than last semester. I told the guy, brother, that's the spirit. That is the spirit. Next semester, I know he will do better. Why? Because the communication of your faith can only become effectual when you start acknowledging every good thing which is in you, which is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah! Do you know when you say I have failed, you're conscious of self. He never failed. He never fails. But I failed. He never fails. Jesus. He never fails. But I got I got a retake. He never fails. I mean to say that 
God rates you higher than that we take. The race is not to the swift, neither the battle to the strong, neither bread to the men of skill, but experiences happen to every man. That's why the most successful men didn't go to school. Because some people were too conscious about self and they thought that because they attained by merit in this world, let me tell you, the, the thing called blessing puts you on the same line with the man of merit. When the man of merit makes two steps, for you, you make one step. Tell your neighbor, I'm blessed. Don't ever be compared to a man who is not walking after the covenant of the new creature. I am blessed. I am blessed. If you get a first class, wonderful. You're the head and not the tail. If you failed, I still want to tell you, you are still the head and not the tail. Why? Because he has been made our wisdom, our redemption, our sanctification. That's men rating you. Now somebody says, ha. Now this one is advising our students not to read. No. The incorruptible seed can't fail deliberately. But if you should see failure, it didn't fail. Because it's incorruptible. And you know what? It sounds crazy, but they still come. Because you're making sense. Even next Thursday they'll come because you're making sense. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I, me, from day one I said I refuse to rate myself with this world. I cannot subject myself to a Babylonian system. Are you hearing me? Babylonian, there's competition. That's why your boss says evil things about you. And then the other one also snakes you in front of the administrator such that they can cut your money. And then even the other one reports you. And then the other one says, because it's competition. You understand? They're all like little chickens competing for food. We are not in that level. Tell your neighbor, I'm not in that level. I'm Melchizedek. You don't know my beginning and you don't know my end. He says, and so is a man which is born of the spirit. They're like a wind. You don't know how much they have or how much they will have, but you feel them, baby. The wind blows. Where it what? It wants. If I want to be a success, I am a success. If I want to heal, I will heal. If I want to increase, I will increase. If I want to drive a car, I will do it. Are you hearing me? Because I blow where I list. What do you want? What do you want? In a, this is what you are saying, Apostle, it is too good to be true. It is called the good news. It's the good news. It's the good news. When you become Christ conscious, spirit conscious, even your language changes. Your language changes. I can never say certain things again. Even if you twist my arm how, I cannot say them. If I must communicate them, I'll look for another word to mean something. But there are certain words my mouth can never say. Why? Because I cannot set myself from God. He says, I will never leave you. So you cannot introduce yourself alone. The bigger grace, Jesus is in me. Hallelujah. I have the life which is of the spirit. Kiris of Agana, that's who I am. I'm not sorry. Because that's who I am. I don't sit in a car and I'm saying, God, give me Jani Masses. It's like he throws them in your car. Then for you, you go alone. No! No! We go together. I don't need Jani Masses. He can't die in a car accident. He can't.
I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. I don't need Johnny Masses. I have Christ. He can't die in a car with me. No. No. I still have a lot to do. Tell your neighbor, I still have a lot to do. Not now. Not yet. There's a man of God around us here. He talked to me a few days ago. He was in his, in his bedroom. And a very sharp pain came in his chest. Very sharp pain. Then he stood up. He told me, Apostle, I said, it's not yet my time to die. He went back to bed. It's not yet. I still have things to do. Oh, Rabakot. Then another one gets the same thing. He calls, Where are my children? Where am I? Where am I? If I die, don't give that house to Peter. <coughs> he might take it. Hallelujah. If it's not yet your time, it's not yet your time. In the name of Jesus. Now, let's go to Romans. I was still finishing some here. Uh -huh. Focusing on the self is the opposite of focusing on God. Anyone completely absorbed in self ignores God and ends up thinking more about self than God. That person ignores who God is and what he's doing. And the next verse says, and God isn't pleased at being ignored. He didn't like it. Next verse. But if God himself has taken up residence in your life, if God himself, now you don't have it in other thing you call Jesus, but when you have the real God, you can hardly be thinking. When God enters you, you hardly think of yourself. Feelings, thoughts, purpose, him. So you cannot tell me that I have a, a demon spirit. How? Because I think of him. Does he have a demon spirit? For as he is, so are you. Oh. Oh. If you understand that. One time, many years, I was in the bank banking. And then I got a very sharp pain in my stomach. It was a Saturday afternoon. Then I went in there. I said, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is not me. This is not me. This is not me. You understand? And then when I reached in the middle, I pictured that Christ was in me. God is my witness. I jeered. I just... I straightened myself up. And I went to work. Not because the pain left. No. But because I told the thing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You don't know who you're playing with. Yes, Warwala. Yes, Warwala. Does Jesus fall sick? Answer me. I straightened myself up and went on my table like nothing is happening. How are you? I'm fine. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. After a few minutes, I think the guy said, let me chill this guy. Cleft. Cleft. That's called spiritual warfare. But some people, the man, boah. He said, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Come, send ambulance right now. And plots in Kampala are running out. Some of you are going to start living far away from hospitals. If you don't have faith, it's up to you. One time I was in America preaching, and a certain pastor wrote me an email later and told me, we don't believe that God was sent to heal everybody. Apostle, that's erroneous. That's erroneous. God didn't come to heal everybody. We don't believe in that. Then he quoted this, this, the, the what? The thorn in Paul. He forgot that Paul said, and to keep me from getting puffed up because of the abundance of revelation. Some of you don't even have revelation. You also say, I have a thorn in the flesh. He told me that's erroneous. Jesus didn't come to heal everybody. So as I looked at that email, and God told me, don't answer it. I never responded to it. Sometimes I don't feel obligated to answer a man who hasn't had God. I wish he came to Africa, where women produce on the road because hospitals are far. 
where people speak in tongues because that's the only option. You'd understand that a woman can push. Recently, our own was in a hospital. They were telling me she was Rabba Baba Kosha Katala. They told me, Apostle, she's pushing, but she's speaking in tongues. I told them, let her alone. <laughs> Others are calling on their mothers and fathers. The other one is Arabba K. Zombo Kotalaba Rosakaye. It's simple. Here, Jesus is all we have. He said, I shall heal all your diseases. And he says, and none among them shall say, I am sick. And somebody's telling me, God didn't come to heal all diseases and he says and the inhabitants of that land shall, shall not say I am sick for the people that dwell therein shall be forgiven nobody in there shall say I'm sick are we together when he was wounded for our transgression he didn't say yours no but for everyone no all of us if a man of God chooses to be sick that's their problem me I refuse to be Seek, be it done unto you according to your faith. Because let me tell you, there is a universal distinction of faith that disqualifies anything that seeks to disqualify any man who believes. And that is the simple word, whatsoever you ask. Whosoever shall say. Whosoever means everybody. Whatsoever means anything. It didn't disqualify anyone. It didn't disqualify anything. Everything can be healed. Everything can be done. And anybody can do anything. It's up to you. So, me, I'm that side. I'm not in the thorns. I'm where? Whatsoever, whoever. Shall not say, I am sick. Me, that's where I am. How many are with me there? I knew. <laughs> Let's finish the message so you go home. Now, the Bible says, here, Romans, please. He says, if God himself has taken up residence in your life, you can hardly be thinking more of yourself than of him. Anyone, of course, who has not welcomed this invisible but clearly present God, the spirit of Christ, won't know what we are talking about. Next. But for you, who welcomed him, in whom he dwells, even though you still experience all limitation of sin, you yourself experience life on God's time. Next verse. It stands to reason, doesn't it, that if the alive and present God who raised Jesus from the dead moves in your life, right? He will do the same thing in you that he did in Jesus. What will he do? He will bring you alive to himself. When God lives and breathes in you, and he does as surely as he did in Jesus, you are delivered from that dead life. With his spirit living in you, your body is as alive. Oh! cancer what were you even doing there in the first place if you by mistake entered there you are as alive as Jesus can Jesus worry that he has cancer Jesus we are sorry you have cancer can Jesus worry no I refuse to you know right now I'm treating some people I'm imagining how you're going to look at 90. When you feed on this thing, eh? Indeed, the scriptures are clear. 
If you eat well, you live long. <laughs> the psalmist says that the law of God is in his heart and his feet shall not slide. Psalms 37 verse 31. Psalms 37 verse 31. The law of his God is in his heart and none of his steps shall what? You can't slide when his law. You see, his is different from the Moses. His is for you. All right? Moses is, is against you. And some people think they are the same. The one which was against you was nailed. That's why he says that you're no longer under the law, but under grace. Sin shall have no dominion over you. You're now slaves to righteousness. That means even if you don't want, you find yourself doing the right thing. Right? Like the other time, even if you don't want, you'd find yourself doing. Now let me share a small mystery and then we close. Can you allow me for a minute? When you understand that you're a child of the Most High, it's the beginning definition of what qualifies you as a man and a woman of God. Now, God is spirit, right? So when I say you're a man of God, you're a man of spirit, right? You're begotten of the spirit. Our daily occupation in the things of God is comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. Are you hearing me? You, when you put your heart to refuse to be conscious of yourself anymore, stop being yourself. You're going to enjoy God. You're not going to lay hands on people eh, and think, let me pray and see. Because Jesus just didn't pray and hope to see. Jesus prays to get results. Every moment you go in the presence of Almighty God, always know that you are superior to human race. Humanity is frail and weak. It's the slave spirit. He took on the form of a slave and came in the likeness of a man. You understand? Lordship is above this body that we carry. There is something inside you and I that lives and will exist longer than your body. How are we together? The spirit world is too stuck right now. Because many men who are supposed to be functioning and bringing manifestation of results on the earth are all too selfish. They are too conscious of the self. Their inability. They've deported themselves into the flesh. Everything, when they feel headache, they feel it as a man. When they feel stomachache, they feel stomachache as a man. When they sit in a car, they drive like a man. When they get married, they marry like men. You understand? When they produce children, they produce like men. When they go to work, they go like men. When they are voting, they are voting like men. When they are praying, they are praying like men. Stop doing that. Start praying like you are God. Start believing like you are God. Stop being conscious of the things the men of this world are conscious of. The men of this world are conscious to elements. They are conscious to appetites. They are conscious to all of those things. We are not conscious of elements. We are not conscious of appetites. We are not conscious of human desire. We are not. He says even though you are in this world, you are not of this world. You are citizens of heaven. You have to everything you do always remind yourself you're not going to marry like any other normal person you're not going to have children like any other normal person you're not going to build a ministry like any other man you're not going to drive a car like any other man you're not going to live like any other man you're not going to die like normal men that is why some men of the Bible lived long because they were present with God so they were too absent from the body to tire it. Because one day in the house of the Lord is like a thousand in the world. So when you're in his presence, you redeem a thousand. You, your body grows one day. What the man in the world grows a thousand days. That's why as you continue in this thing, you look younger. People will start to tell you, but hey, now you look younger. You say, where am I going? Where am I going? We don't die because of old age. We go to heaven because we've finished. 
That's our destiny. That's our destiny. That's why everything now looks carnal. People's businesses are carnal. It's them. It's not for God. It's not for God. If you have a shop tomorrow morning, enter it and tell him, look, you're serving a Lord. You're serving God. You're not a normal shop. You're not here just to make money and give me food on my table. You're here to build the kingdom of Almighty God. You're here to occupy until he comes. But the conscience, that's why Paul says that my spirit, my conscience bears witness with the Holy Spirit that what I'm saying is true. The only thing that I can approve you in the spirit world is the state and stability of your conscience to the spirit of truth. When your conscience is aligned to truth, he says, I say the truth in Christ, I lie. My conscience also bearing witness in the Holy Ghost. The place in you that receives and hears God must bear witness in truth, with truth, in the Holy Ghost. You must be conscious of the Spirit in truth. Be conscious. Be conscious. Me, when I enter a place, I'm conscious. I know when I enter a building, something must change. When I leave a nation, the people in that nation must feel it that I left. That's my conscience. Are you hearing me? That's my conscience. When I walk alone on the road, I don't walk like a normal human being. I don't think that I'm walking like a normal human being. I feel that inside me there's this guy boiling. Are you hearing me? He's great and big in me. And sometimes I find myself on the road saying, Robo steli raka. You understand? When people attack me, I say, God, look at them attacking us. I don't say, they're attacking me. No, they're attacking us. You always listen when I'm saying, when they wrote about us. Some of you think I mean you, Fanir. No, I mean me and him. So, why are you persecuting me? See, I, I, I own God. I own God and he owns me. Somebody say, I own God and he owns me. He's mine and I am his. Hallelujah. So he can't set in you what's against you. The law of your God is for you. It will work in you and accomplish in you. Now I want you to just take a minute and speak things God speak. Don't make human prayers. Please, just speak things God speak. Say something. Say something. Say something. You make my life so beautiful. For as you were, you have made me here on earth. There's nothing greater than these. That's why I love you forevermore. I want. a moment that defines destinies start to speak into your future create it create your future prophesy into your future don't wait for me to tell it to you prophesy into your future create create
That's why I love you Expiry date is now. Listen. Listen. Right now, wherever you are, you barren spirit, I command you. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Cancer leaves. Anybody who has been diagnosed with cancer, I feel the spirit of cancer leaving now. 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 You've been having, there's somebody you've been having a swelling in your left breast. God is healing you now. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. For who saw the sunset is free, is free indeed. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's done. Let me say a few words on your life. I decree in the name of Jesus that tonight self dies. Self conscience or consciousness dies. Tonight you're conscious of only God. Because in Him you live, move, and have your own being. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree that you're free from self. You're delivered from self. And God is going to make your way so bright that the people, I see that people will come and watch you. People will come and watch you. I see a light shining on your path. Whoever I'm talking to, you understand. You see it too. Take it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. A light will shine in your path. Favor will follow you. The glory of God will be with you. His anointing will not slacken. In the name of Jesus, greatness is in you. What eye has not seen and has entered, what has not entered the hearts of men, what ear has not heard, 
God lights your way. I see somebody came like with a burden, eh? and I see God literally lifting it off. He's lifting it off. He's lifting it off. I see spiritually, God takes things off you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Somebody, you came in so heavy, you're tired. He says, let me take off that yoke. And I give you mine because it is light. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Now listen, before you leave, we need to witness this. I pray for you, it is done. It is done. It is done. Where's she suffering from? Eh? Oh. I rebuke. Put, put your hand in our stomach. I rebuke that spirit of barrenness. Go! In the name of Jesus. It's done. Now if you're here and you say, me, I'm not born again. And I want to give my life to Christ. Come now. We want to finish. Come. Sharon, come. Sharon, 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 come. I need to lay hands on you. Anybody wants to give their lives to Christ, come here. I need to pray for like three people. I feel instructed. Lady in green, come. If you want to be born again, come and stand here. If you want to be born again, come and stand here. Father, in the name of Jesus, separate her, anoint her, in Jesus' mighty name. Come, come, come. Raise your hands. In Jesus' mighty name, be lifted of you. Let it be lifted of you. Let you walk free. Let you walk free. Let you walk free. Let you walk in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God says you're going to walk free. Everything is going to come easy. In just mighty name. Anybody wants to give their life to Christ? Anybody wants to give their life to Christ? Come. Come. Is that all? No. There is more. Come on. And ask your neighbor. You people, don't just sit. If you're not, come. I feel there is more. Come. Help us. She'll hit her head down. Push her to the other side. Anybody else? Anybody else? In the overflow? Anybody else? Is anybody else wants to give their life to Christ? Huh? Huh? Can I close? All right. Repeat this after me. Jesus, I believe with my heart that you need and rose again. And I confess with my mouth that you know what? From today, your both Savior and Lord of my life. Jesus' name. Say amen. Now, God bless you. I need to pray for another group of people. There are three ladies here. Three, yeah? Lately, you've been having a situation where you, you feel like nauseated. You want to throw up, eh? Come, I need to lay hands on you. You've been feeling like Sometimes you even throw up. Come, come, come stand here. Put up your hands. There's a third one. Where is she? You're here. Put up your hands. In the name of Jesus, be delivered. Be delivered. Be delivered. Be delivered. Be delivered. Whatever you eat comes out now. 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 I refuse that affliction in the name of Jesus. I speak healing right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Where is Susan Okoti? Come. Where is Susan? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Where is Susan? No, Susan Okoti. Where is she? Susan Okoti. Where is she? Susan. She's outside. Be healed. Where is Susan? Susan. Susan. 
కొట్టి సుజన్ సుజన్ ఒకటి Where is Susan Okodi? Overflow. Where is Susan? She's around. Unless she left early. Where is Susan? Huh? She left. She has left. Wow. Now she has missed. God deliver you in the name of Jesus. God deliver you in the name of Jesus. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you Lord Jesus. Come on. Thank you Lord. Brother Imaru come. Jesus. Give me just a few just two three minutes I'll be close. That lady she's I call that one. She's with you. Jesus you will not struggle again Jesus God opens doors for you in the name of Jesus Christ his hands are free for who saw the sun set free is free indeed receive it in the name of Jesus receive it in the name of Jesus thank you Lord Father I thank you for what you're doing in his life I thank you for the anointing that you press on his life in Jesus mighty name and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ hey love of God and fellowship of the Holy Ghost is with us on our forever amen father we thank you for the giving of your people may you bless them multiply them increase them in Jesus name amen amen he had me hallelujah thank you lord jesus thank you you have to come the one next to the one in pink restoration God is going to restore God is going to restore relationship God is going to restore I see God restoring come Father in the name of Jesus let us be restored everything she has lost comes back in Jesus mighty name somebody say amen all right you can go home men of God come and help me for those of you who want to be prayed for Pastor Sam Pastor Sam Pastor Butes sir can come and help me the elders what do you want to be prayed for we have men of god here oh just stand here come to this man of god pastor za pastor tesa pastor sam you can come if you want to be prayed for he's the more the pastors are standing here
pray for people. The pastor's name. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest. Thank you.